So in this video, I wanna cover depression and some underlying blood work that you might wanna consider if you are suffering from that. So in this video, I'm gonna cover five different types of tests, different blood tests that you can run or ask your doctor for um, in the context of depression. So obviously there are a ton of underlying causes of depression. So there's a lot of stuff out there, uh, somebody's trauma, their life situation, different stressors in their lives. But from my perspective, I like to uh, call it a bottom-up approach. So discovering the underlying physiology and biology that could be exacerbating or contributing to that depression. So not necessarily a complete cause of that depression, but definitely a contributing factor. And in clinical practice, when I'm treating these type of blood tests, I do see uh, massive improvements in many of my patients. So let's dive in. So I wanna talk about the first type of test, which is a full thyroid panel. So this is gonna consist of TSH, free T4, free T3, as well as uh, thyroid antibodies. So typically from a, from a conventional medicine standpoint or from a, you know, a typical primary care provider or an endocrinologist, they will typically run just a TSH and or a free T4. So this doesn't give the entire story behind the thyroid. And actually, you know, if a provider is just testing TSH, they're actually not even testing thyroid hormone technically. It's the signal from the brain to tell the thyroid to produce thyroid hormone. So I like to go a little bit more in depth and test the free level. So the free T3 is one of the most important levels in my opinion, because that's the circulating and usable form of thyroid hormone. And so thyroid plays a significant role in our amounts of energy. Uh, when that's low, people are definitely fatigued and can become more depressed as a consequence of that. So all the cells in our body have a receptor for thyroid hormone, and it's very critical to have adequate amounts of uh, free levels of thyroid hormone in your bloodstream in order to just function optimally and to have a good mood. I'll also test for antibodies in some people because Hashimoto's um, and Graves' disease are two common diagnoses. Um, Hashimoto's much more common than Graves' disease, but those can also contribute to hypothyroidism or um, if not overt hypothyroidism to uh, subclinical hypothyroidism. So when the levels are not quite up to par, um, they could definitely be optimized. So that's the first group of tests that I typically will run on a patient that's suffering from depression. The next test I'll run is a type of inflammatory marker known as HSCRP, so high sensitivity C-reactive protein. So this is a marker of inflammation in the body that I often see elevated in people with depression. So there are a lot of studies out there showing that the more inflamed a person is, the more depressed they are. So this is often a consequence of, actually a lot of different things can cause elevations in HSCRP. So that's basically the first step is figuring out, is your uh, inflammatory marker high? And then if so, we need to figure out why it's high. So a lot of times that could be gut dysfunction and so I'll oftentimes follow that up with comp uh, comprehensive stool testing in patients. And so we can figure out what is actually going on in the gut and determine what is causing the inflammation. It could also be a variety of other different factors as well, um, but that's a great place to start. And like I said before, so when there is inflammatory processes and especially inflammatory processes in the gut, the gut makes a lot of our neurotransmitters and has a huge impact on our mood and on our mental health. The next marker I wanna talk about is another inflammatory marker known as homocysteine. So homocysteine is an amino acid found in the blood that is elevated when there's typically deficiencies in several different B vitamins. So most notably vitamin B6, B9 or folate, and then B12 or cobalamin. So homocysteine will tend to build up in the body and can be inflammatory in nature when people are not having adequate amounts of those B vitamins that I just mentioned. And so a lot of times what can exacerbate this is genetic mutations like the MTHFR gene, which make 
the conversion of folate into its methylated or usable form much less efficient, depending on if there's a single mutation or a double mutation. So if a person has a single mutation for MTHFR, all that means is they have roughly a 30 to 40% reduction in their ability of converting folate into its active form. People with the double mutation have up to a 70 or even 80% reduction in that process, and thereby they can see uh, depletions in those B or those active B vitamins, and then you can see an elevated homocysteine as a consequence of that. So the type of B vitamins that people need to be supplementing with if they do have that MTHR, MTHFR mutation definitely goes a little bit beyond the scope of this video, but um, that's there's a lot to that basically, and there's other genetic mutations that play a big role in that, as, especially when somebody ha is suffering from anxiety as well. So you need to be very careful about that. You can't necessarily just throw in some um, methylfolate into the picture that can make some people worse. The next marker that I often test for in people with depression is vitamin D. So I'm here in San Diego, California, and you'd be surprised that most of the patients that I see in clinical practice do have suboptimal or even low levels of vitamin D. So it's something that definitely um, should be checked on a regular basis, in my opinion, and low levels can significantly contribute to depression. So vitamin D is really necessary for neurotransmitter production like dopamine and serotonin, which play a huge role in our mood, um, how we're feeling, our levels of motivation, and just our overall well-being. And so vitamin D is something that's very easy to supplement. Um, but you wanna check your levels to make sure that you're in the right range. So typically for people, I like to see vitamin D levels between about 50 to 80-ish. And so when people are below that in the 40s and the 30s or even lower than that in the 20s, um, that can play a big role in their mental health. So it's an easy marker to check and that can make a big difference. The next group of markers that I often check and the last markers that I often check are blood sugar markers. So insulin, hemoglobin A1C, and a fasting glucose. So these all measure how much blood sugar we have in the body. And so to put simply, so they measure, measure different things. So hemoglobin A1C is a basically a three month average of our blood sugar versus glucose is just a spot check. So what is your glucose at the moment of the blood draw? And then insulin is basically what our body produces to bring glucose into the cell. So glucose and blood sugar levels play a big role in mental health and depression. So a lot of times people are eating a lot of carbohydrates in their diet or missing a lot of meals. Um, or having not enough protein or healthy fats, and so their blood sugar levels are spiking and crashing, and that can play a big role in our mental health. So this is definitely one thing that I like to check in patients is how are their blood sugar levels, how is their insulin, um, how is their hemoglobin A1C, where are, they on, where are they at on average? And so by that I can determine is you know, having higher levels of blood sugar contributing to their depression, and also to note is higher levels of, of blood sugar rather can um, exacerbate inflammation and can trigger more inflammation in the body, which as you saw from our previous point, can impact depression. So the more inflamed we are, the more depressed our mood is typically. So those are some of the markers that I recommend checking for people. Again, talk with your doctor about this. Um, there are some great um, consumer to lab um, companies out there, you can just go directly to the lab and order some of these yourself. But in order to interpret them, I would highly recommend speaking with a uh, functional medicine provider so that you can get the right knowledge in terms of what to do about those markers. So I hope you found this video helpful and be sure to stick around for more.